has this ever happened to you? Have you ever been in a position where all of a sudden your listings have been removed by Amazon or you've received this warning or all of a sudden uh, you were selling a product and you realize that it's just not in your inventory anymore? If so, then you need to watch this video. It's definitely going to be for you to have an understanding of why this is happening. But before we get started, welcome to Nevermind the Buy Box. This is your go-to channel for all things Amazon selling in the UK and beyond. My name's Natalie and each week we're going to be releasing videos that are going to dive deep into all of our best tips, tricks and hacks that's going to help you skyrocket your Amazon sales and also across various different e-commerce channels as well. So if you are ready to take your online business to the next level, please make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to this channel to get all the latest updates. So why is this happening? At the back end of last year, Amazon decided that it wanted to clean up its catalog. It wanted to get rid of listings that were not correctly matched or attributed to the GS1 database, which is something that Amazon now recommends that when you create new listings on Amazon, that all new listings should be created with a GS1 barcode. It is the official barcode uh, site of the world. It's globally recognized both here in the UK and also in the US and beyond. And it's the system that Amazon officially wants to uh, have associated with all of the listings created on Amazon because of that reason, because it's globally recognized. If you scan uh, a barcode and it's from GS1, then it should be recognized in most places in the world. So that's the reason why. Now, there are other barcode providers um, where you can buy secondhand barcodes uh, that are not associated with GS1. And you used to be able to use these type of barcodes to create listings on Amazon. But over the years, Amazon have actually become a lot stricter on what you can actually use in order to create a listing on Amazon. And then around a couple of years ago, maybe 18 months ago, they introduced the Amazon brand name policy, which also compounded to the effect of using GS1 barcodes that you also had to ensure that the right brand was being attributed to those barcodes as well. Now, in an ideal world, Amazon want the brand itself to be able to list any type of branded products on Amazon. So I'm talking about big brand products. I'm not talking about private label products because, of course, the people that own private label products are the brand owners. So I'm talking about brand owners. What they want is they want ideally for Cabri, just as an example, uh, when they create a new product for them to be able to create the listing or have someone that's authorized to create the listing on their behalf on Amazon and to have uh, a GS1 issued barcode, which of course uh, Cabri will use, you know, a company like Cabri is going to use GS1, but it to be uh, also registered under Cabri or whoever owns Cabri, the parent company of Cabri, which I'll come on and, and talk about in a moment. But that's what Amazon wants. But of course, it doesn't always work like that because to be perfectly honest, Cabri don't care. You know, Cabri are not selling direct themselves on Amazon as of this date. Now, I know that there uh, are, are a few affiliates of uh, Cabri's and Cabri's Gift Direct that do actually sell direct on Amazon. But Cabri themselves, as far as I'm aware, are not selling on Amazon at this stage. So they don't really care at the end of the day. They're not going to go onto Amazon and list every single product and create uh, every single product uh, from their own product range, which must extend into the thousands. They're not going to go ahead and create those. And this is where the problem is is occurring because say for instance Cadbury release a new chocolate bar okay and uh, it's not available on Amazon yet but I go out uh, retail arbitraging uh, or you know go into my local Tesco's or something like that I notice it I think wow this is going to sell really really well 
what I want to do is I want to get that on Amazon uh, and I want to get it sold because I want to get ahead of the curve here. And, you know, I can put it at a great price uh, and I can sell it on Amazon because no one knows about this product as yet. And it's not on the Amazon catalog. Now, the issue that I've got is I am not Cadbury's. So I cannot go ahead and list that particular product, especially if I want to sell it in a multiples uh, pack, like a bundle or a multi pack or something like that because I do not have a barcode associated with that. Now, I can use the barcode uh, on the product to list it as an individual item, but that's if Amazon will allow me to list it because sometimes I have to have a letter of authorization to be able to list it under that particular brand. And also, to be perfectly honest, even, even if they did allow you without the letter of authorization, Sometimes what can happen is um, a barcode can be recycled by a company. So it may well be that they've used that barcode previously before. So it doesn't match and it doesn't come up with that new product anyway. So, you know, there's a, a whole bag of issue when it comes to uh, creating new listings to do with barcodes that already exist and don't already exist. Now, I can't ring up Mr. Cabri and say, hey, you know, I've I've got this new chocolate bar. Guess what? Um, it's not on the Amazon catalog. Can you go ahead and put it on there for me? I mean, they don't care who I am at the end of the day. They're not interested. Um, you know, they're not going to they're not going to issue me a barcode to be able to do that. I'm just simply not important enough. So what happens is when it comes to putting these listings on Amazon, uh, people uh, will have their own either GS1 barcodes um, or they are going to be listing these type of products on a GTI and exemption. And what actually happens is over a period of time, because obviously Cadbury is, like I said, it's not going to issue us the, with that barcode, is Amazon will do random catalog database checks. And when, say, for instance, it comes across this specific product and it sees that uh, the barcode that this product has been attributed to uh, on Amazon does not match Cadbury's because it, it can't, um, because I'm the one that's listing it. And say, for instance, it's under Natalie's brand, then it will throw up this error and it will throw up uh, this particular um, removal warning to say that this listing will be removed if you do not respond by this date. So it would normally give you anywhere between the shortest I've seen is 48 hours. Uh, but most of the time it gives anywhere between sort of two weeks to four weeks. And what it's saying is if you do not correct this issue and if you do not change this, so it, it is under the correct brand moving forward, which means that you would need to change the UPC or the EAN code. If you do not change it, then we are going to remove this listing because it doesn't match the brand. The listing does not match the brand or the product doesn't match the brand that you are saying this particular product is under. So it's a brand mismatch. Okay. So that is the issue. Now, um, around just at the end of last year, Amazon had a massive purge on these type of products. And this is something that's still continuously happening now, but I kind of liken it a little bit like the uh, the declaration of conformity with toys. So what happens is once a year, once every six months, Amazon just goes into meltdown and it has a big purge on stuff like this. And what it does is all of a sudden it must think to itself, what can I do to make Amazon sellers lives even harder? Oh, I know. Um, I'll send out this massive error to everyone. And it just cause, uh, you know, just causes carnage. Because, you know, if you're a retail uh, online arbitrage reseller, then, uh, you know, depending on how many SKUs you've got in your inventory, I've seen some people with a thousand SKUs with this that have literally had 50% of their inventory removed down to this Amazon purge. So it's, you know, it's quite worrying. So, you know, what can we do? 
Well, there's not a lot we can actually do to fix it because um, one, if you are a reseller, it's highly likely you didn't create the listing in the first place. So you're only kind of guilty by association, unfortunately. So if you are not the listing creator, this is something you are just not going to be able to fix. So when you receive or get this particular error, uh, then what's going to happen is uh, you will be given a date. And my you know, best advice is just to sell out by that time, because this is something where Amazon will remove the listing unless the original creator um, is able to fix it. And the chance of that happening is quite zero because one, the listing creator might not even be an Amazon seller anymore themselves. So it is something that does need to be fixed. Now, it's possible Amazon might fix it themselves if they have the ability to be able to do so. I have seen that happen, especially with big brands that Amazon have the authority to to um, do listings on their behalf, uh, which is something that they can do under brand registry. So yes, I have seen it done, but you've literally got to think uh, it's like a 99.5% chance that this listing is going to be removed. So the best thing to do if you see this and you are not the listing creator, then is to sell out by that time because what will happen is you will, the listing will be deleted and your products will then go into stranded inventory. But Amazon do give you a little bit of time to be able to do it. But if there is a lot of other sellers on the listing, it's highly likely they're going to get the same warning as well. So just be realistic for what you want to sell it for, because, you know, the price is probably going to tank quite heavily uh, in this scenario. When this happens to me, I'm quite happy just to get my money back. You know, it's a it's a ditch and wave goodbye uh, for this particular product. Now, if you are the listing creator and you do get this again. Again, it is something that you have a little bit more power on, but at the same time, if it's like a standalone Cadbury bar or something like that, you cannot do what Amazon wants you to do, which is, uh, you know, issue a barcode and swap out that barcode uh, certificate um, and update it on Amazon with the correct brand details on it, i.e. Cabri. You just can't do that. So you're not going to have the ability to do it, even if you are the listing creator in this case. The only time you'll be able to do it, if it's some sort of bundle, if it's some sort of, um, you know, that maybe you've listed under generic or several or multiple in the past and now you want to bring it under your brand and it's a unique bundle uh, that has unique elements then absolutely that's something you can do and we'll do a separate video about that at a later stage but ultimately again you're not going to be in a great position even if you are the listing creator and it's just like a, a standalone product or a non-unique bundle. So as it stands at the moment, this is like the world's most unhelpful video because all I've done is tell you what you can't do uh, and what you can't fix in this particular scenario. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you how you can potentially recognize it. So you could avoid this issue in, in the future. You can add this into your due diligence and you can see potentially whether or not there could be an issue. Now, it's one of those things we don't know how often Amazon is going to pop up with these purges, um, but we do know that this is something that is continually uh, happening at the moment. So it may well be that all of a sudden you don't get any of these for ages, then you get a whole boat, uh, a whole bulk load or you, um, you know, get them on a, a semi-regular basis, which is what we're kind of seeing. We, we, we tend to get a couple every now and again uh, on the arbitrage side. And this is generally something that is, for the, for the most part, affecting resellers, although it is affecting um, private label sellers as well. If they have a semi-old product that doesn't match their brand, uh, or something like that. But the purposes of this video, we're just going to talk about reselling products. So how can you identify it? Well, it will take you to this page. So if you just go into uh, manage inventory, uh, hit all inventory, 
And then if you look at the top of the screen, it will say search suppressed products. If you hit that, it's like at the top of the uh, the page. It will take you to uh, this page here, uh, the fix your products section. Now, what you're actually looking for is this section here, which is at risk listings. Now, as you can see, I don't have any at the moment, but by the, the power of Photoshop, I have uh, put in ones that we have had previously. So if you click on this section here and you receive this error, then it's going to give you the instructions of what's happening. Like I said, generally, it's going to be a countdown for how long you've got in order to sell your products. So what I would recommend if you are in charge of your own admin is making sure that you're checking this once a week. If you have a, an administrator, virtual assistant that's going to be doing it for you, this is just a process that you need to add in because sometimes this doesn't get checked that often uh, if you're not aware of it. And before you know it, this is what I said at the start of the video, all of a sudden it's disappeared out of your inventory and you don't know where it's gone. So if you're not checking this regularly, uh, what will happen, it will give you that kind of countdown. So make sure that you're adding this in once a week just to double check if you've got any at risk listings. And if you have, like I said, if you can fix it, great. If not, you're going to have to sell out by that time. Or of course, if you don't want to sell out at a lower price, then you can wait for the products to go into strand, uh, stranded inventory and you can create a removal order. Uh, but of course, uh, you can't send back in like you would be able to normally uh, because the listing will be deleted. So how can I check? if my listings are going to be impacted. Now, this is something you may or may not decide to do. It's entirely up to you. It's a little bit like, do I actually go through this process of checking all of my current SKUs? I certainly wouldn't because at the end of the day, you don't know whether or not it's going to be flagged by Amazon. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Um, it may well be that you discover that one of the listings has a mismatch uh, within your inventory. However, you know, until you receive that warning, what's the point of doing anything about it? So this isn't something I would do to my current inventory, but it is possible that if there's a little bit of a red flag, what I would do is it could be added to part of the due diligence um, with the sourcing team. They can, you know, check this and it would be something that I would want to recognize and flag up because with something like this, you generally given, like I said, between two and four weeks to sell the product. At one point, a little while ago, I was like, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sell these products moving forward. You know, that's going to be my due diligence. If I can see that the barcode does not match, I am not going to sell those products moving forward. But that's a bit silly because I don't know if, or even when, you know, this, this could occur. So what I need to do is I just need to be a little bit more aware. So when it comes to this, yes, it's a red flag. Yes, we alert it in our inventory. And when it comes to replenishing that item, we always make sure that we never carry any more than a couple of weeks to 30 days worth of stock in Amazon. So we know that we can get rid of that stock really, really quickly if we need to. Obviously, the faster the mover, uh, you know, we'll go towards 30 days. If it's a slower mover, then we will replenish it after, you know, only carry anywhere between 14 to 21 days. But this is why it's important to have a good replen system. We're able to do that. Some people might be like, yeah, that's going to be too much hassle but we've got a good replan system to be able to do that. So I'm going to show you an example of how you can identify these uh, type of issues. So this is a well-known arbitrage product. Unfortunately, it's not a profitable one anymore uh, because I believe Amazon sell this now and they sell it pretty much at the price you can get it for. So um, what you guys need to look out for is, and this is where having something like Buybot Pro is handy, is you can see here, this is the brand field. Okay, so this is whatever this particular product is under, this is the brand field that it is attributed to. And you can quite clearly say here that it's Bleach London and it has been taken under the Bleach London store. So you think, great, okay, I can sell this. It's it's under 
the if it's under there, it must be under the right barcode. Well, are we so sure about that? If we go down to here, if we analyze this on Bible Pro, what it does is it brings up the ASIN, it brings up the UPC, and it also brings up the EAN code. Now, what I want to do, sometimes these codes will match, sometimes they will be different. So EAN relates to Europe, UPC generally relates to North America. So we can see here that there's two codes that are attributed to this particular product or this particular bundle, sorry. Uh, one, there is a US code and one, there is a UK code. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy uh, that EAN. Then I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to type in GTN search GS1 and I'm going to hit this section here. And I am now going to paste that EAN code in. I'm going to put it under ownership and I'm going to press search. And what I'm looking for is the status to say that the search has gone ahead. So it's been successful. And the return code here is record not found. So what this actually means is that this particular barcode that is associated on here from the European aspect or the UK aspect is not a GS1 barcode. So that's an automatic red flag. One, it's not a GS1. So if Amazon searched that, they're not going to find it in the GS1 barcode uh, database. So that's a big red flag. Now, secondly, you think, okay, well, there's also a UPC attributed. So it might be the right one on there. So again, we're going to search that one. We're going to go back into the GS1 database and we are going to look and I'm just going to paste over, press search, wait for it to come back. It's working. It's thinking about it. Here we go. Career is successful. And I can see here that this has come back with a company. It's come back with a company prefix and it was registered back in 2015. But the party name is Folex HS Schleisnesner. Inc. So that's a US company. Uh, so if I go ahead and copy that, uh, I'm going to put that into Google and see what comes up. And I can see here that it doesn't look like it's anything to do with Bleach London. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a quick, um, you know, a quick search. And I'm going to say, um, who owns uh, Bleach London? And we can see here that it's owned by a stylist. If I can go into the website, hopefully it will tell me. It's going to give me a little bit more information um, about who owns it. Uh, let's just have a quick look. Uh, blah, 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 Bleach London. But it certainly doesn't look like that company. Now, um, I'm going to leave, you, uh, leave it up to you guys how much digging you would do. It's possible that that company could now own it but that's up to me to find that out and see whether or not to me it looks like it's just a you know a random US company that has registered this particular bundle in the US and you know it's got and it's attributed so we can't even go it's not going to match from that point of view and Amazon's quite um it, they're quite arbitrary in the sense that they're not going to do this level of research so all they're going to do is they are going to see that it's this name and that it doesn't match this name here and they're just going to put it in that error. Now, what you can do is um, if you were to find that there was a connection, that they do own Bleach London, this particular company, what you can do is you can put an appeal. You can submit a appeal to Seller Central and you can say that it does have the correct barcode and it is connected. This particular company owns this company. It's like an umbrella company and you almost need to submit your evidence. So, you know, and make it really, really clear, but not more than two minutes because that's how long Seller Central have uh, to, you know, have a look at anything that's part of their KPIs. But gather all of that information, almost like if you were putting forward like a, a case, essentially, Put that information forward and say, 
uh, with screenshots, this company owns this company, so therefore it is under the right barcode. Now, if they accept the appeal, the listing will stay and that'll be absolutely fine. And you will find that that does happen quite a lot. So that is definitely worth doing if you get the error, if you get the warning of removal and you can, you know, put your uh, Sherlock Holmes hat on, go detective and discover that there is a connection, absolutely, it's worth doing it in that case, especially if, if it's a good listing and you've got a lot of inventory and what will happen is, you know, other sellers won't do it so they'll probably get a little bit scared and, you know, think, not realise that it's it's not going to be removed. Um, so, you know, you can could end up, you know, doing quite well out of getting the rid of the competition if you're prepared to do that. But I understand if you have hundreds and hundreds of SKUs that come under this, you may not want to go uh, that, de uh, that deep. But that's how we identify whether or not um, it has the correct barcode attributed to it. So what you're looking for ideally is an exact match. If you do not get an exact match, you will be able to tell very, very quickly whether or not the match that is coming up is connected to that particular brand or that particular product. If it is so, then you can put in an appeal and hopefully it will be uh, not removed. But if this is part of your due diligence, it's just something to add into your uh, system, uh, your, your standard operating procedure, that if you do have and come across one of these particular racings that do not match, that you do not go too deep on inventory. Put it like this, if I uh, stocked this particular product and I was getting it from a wholesaler and an offer came up of six months worth of stock uh, at a great price, I wouldn't actually take it up because at any given time, this particular racing could be removed. I'm only ever going to carry a certain amount of stock when it comes to these type of basins. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully this is helpful. It's one of those type of videos. I'm kind of damned if I do, damned if I don't, because uh, there's no magic fix for, for this type of error. And it is something that can happen at any time. And it is something that happens both here in the UK and across the pond. It's just something you guys need to be aware of. Um, and I wanted to go through and highlight the understanding of what it is, why it's happening, and what, if little, which it is in this case, uh, you can actually do about it. So if you have enjoyed this video, please, please, please give us a thumbs up and please leave us a comment. Is this something that you've come across? Have you lost uh, large levels of inventory to this? Is it something that has been worrying you? Are you able to offer any further insight into anything that you've done to help resolve the situation? If so, let us know via the comments. But as ever, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.